Okay, let's look at a sound wave interference problem here. So with interference problems, be it sound or light or whatever um, is type of wave is interfering, your focus should always be on the path length difference. So um, looking at what is the difference in path length that the wave is traveling from each source. And there's more than one source, of course, because we'd be talking about interference. So um, let's just give this one a start. I'm going to go ahead and solve it symbolically, and then we'll pop the values in at the end there, which is how, in my ideal world, you all are solving all your homework and other problems as well. So just remember, it's a lot more powerful to solve these problems symbolically because um, when you do so, you could potentially code those into a computer, right? And then be able to solve for um, a whole bunch of different cases instead of only coming up with a solution for one very specific and limited case. All right. So we're looking at part A here. We have two speakers that are in phase and um, they are along a line. Let me just draw the speakers out real quick. So here is one. I'll call them speaker A and speaker B. And um, they are some distance, we can call it D apart here. Okay, so wherever you are on this line, let's just, we're just talking about on the X axis here, but wherever you are on this line, let me just pick an arbitrary point. Notice that the path length difference will be equal to D, right? Hopefully that makes sense. For instance, if you look at, so say this is point P here, a point of interest. If you look at this distance here, that would be um, R sub B, the path length for speaker B. And if you're looking at this distance right here, this is the path length for speaker A. So the path length difference, that delta R is going to be this distance in here, right? that path length difference is what we're always interested in, as I mentioned before. Okay, when it comes to interference. So we're in phase. What in phase tells us, we like in phase, it makes our life a little simpler, is that the initial phase difference is equal to zero. So that's kind of nice. It's This is a destructive case that we're looking at, uh, that they're asking for. And our destructive constraint is that the path length difference is equal to, there are different ways of writing this, but conceptually what we're after here is that the path length difference is equal to an odd multiple of one half wavelength. So make sure that's clear to you. If that's not, I'd pause this video right now and go back and look at the basic constraints for constructive and destructive interference. And they should make some sense to you just visually that you, if you're going to be off by exactly some odd multiple of half a wavelength, right, that means that when um, one wave is at its crest, the other is at its trough, that's the two waves that are adding. So those are going to sum to zero. So you'll have zero sum across the board if you meet this constraint. Um, okay, so what we know here is that our delta R is equal to D, right, for how this problem is laid out, and that will be equal to M plus one-half times lambda. They're asking what it, for the smallest distance, so we let M equal to zero here. They're not asking for just any distance. This will happen at multiple places, of course, but they want to know what the smallest distance is. So if M is equal to zero, then I have D is equal to lambda over two. And I can calculate what lambda is for this particular problem, given the values that I have. Um, I can look up the speed of sound at that temperature. It should be something around, um, let's see, this will be wave speed over frequency. So speed of sound should be something around 343 meters per second at that temperature. And the frequency emitted were given as 686 hertz. So this ends up being around half a meter. And that allows us to solve for D as lambda over 2, right? which is going to be equal to 0.25 meters. OK, so that's part A. Part B tells us that um, the speakers are out of phase. And let's go ahead and assume that that means completely or exactly out of phase here. OK, so exactly out of phase. So that tells us that the initial phase difference is equal to pi. 
So make sure that you're able to interpret what that um, in and out of phase means, right? If the if they're out of phase by two pi, that actually means they're in phase. Yeah. Okay. So pi means that they're exactly out of phase with each other. Um, cool. So that is equal to pi. A way that you can think about this now is that the path length difference. This is now um, constructive, right? So actually, let me write that out because I did before. So for constructive interference, my path length difference is equal to some integer multiple of the wavelength if the two sources are in phase, okay? If the two sources are in phase. In this case, they're out of phase. So what I need to do here is I need to accommodate for that. And um, let me write this out and I will discuss it in just a sec. Lambda naught or I'm sorry, phi naught um, lambda over two pi. So what this term really is about, I mean, you can read more about it in the text, but um, is sort of taking into consideration that we are shifted by some amount, right? We're shifted by some amount. And that shift has to be, has to be expressed in terms of the wavelength here, right? or is useful for it to be expressed in terms of the wavelength here. So that's why we're expressing it in that particular way. Now we know that um, we're being asked for the smallest distance again. So we're gonna choose m equal to one. Notice that we don't choose m equal to zero. I understand that's a possible case. And you might say like, why wouldn't we choose that? That's because there, m equals zero is the case for zero path length difference, right? And we don't have that here. We know we're going to have some non-zero path length difference just due to the constraints of the physical setup here. So we choose the smallest non-zero value, which is going to be m equals 1. All right. So um, if we do that, and then we let our delta r equal d, so then we'll have d equals m equals 1. So that's lambda. Now um, phi naught is equal to pi times lambda over 2 pi. So this simplifies here a little bit. Lambda minus lambda over 2. That gives me d equals lambda over 2 here. And again, I can see that my wavelength is going to be the same, right? That hasn't changed just because now the speakers are out of phase. The wavelength is the same. The wave speed is the same because the medium is the same and the frequency doesn't change, right? So the wavelength must be the same too. So again, our result here is a quarter meter.